starting. Carrie Ann sang about sweet lies, but we are here to tell you the truth. It is Angus in London. Hello. Hello, William. How are you? <laughs> and it is Lucy up north. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. She's at a house hey, party, hey. but she paused to say hello. And I'm at home. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> it is time to discuss the winner, Michael Rice, bigger than us. Angus, you go first. So I have to say, I will be transparent and honest, I was back in Carrie Ann going into this and I really wanted that song to win. However, tonight, the live vocal, and also I had a dinner party tonight as well with non Eurasian mans. His live vocal elevated this so much and that was the one that won them over. I mean, I had a straight white male who got goosebumps, which is very irregular. I had, you know, two female guests who were both wowed by him. And also just like, he's sweet, he's cute, he has um, sort of a personability about him. He's very warm, he's very friendly. And weirdly, I think Rylan really got it spot on on the jury. This is very much a jury song. Like it felt very Germany song from last year. It has all the right big emotional cues, but he has personality and warmth. And also you can see that he wants this. He's very sweet. Like his VTs are very um, endearing and cute and just, I mean, vocally you can't touch this. This was the best vocal tonight. And you have to say that he knocked it out of the park vocally. I thought this was wonderful live. Um, so yeah, this is, this is back in the Lucy Jones realm of thing. I think this is a really strong ballad. He did very well. Um, and I think he's very likable, very likable. You've got to say, you can't take that away from him. Lucy up north, what do you think? Oh my god, I completely agree. So we did a reaction video when the six songs were first released and I was a bit bitter at me then, I think. But oh my god, my opinion has changed so much recently. Like I as soon as I heard the songs the second time, I was like, Michael's the winner. Like he I mean, I think on that video we all said Michael's gonna win. But when I heard it kind of more and more, I was like, this is pretty special. And he is charismatic and on the wee wee videos where you were interviewing him at the bbc can i just say i'm so excited to hear like people trying to decipher a geordie accent when he's doing interviews and things that's going to be amazing um but he's just so lovable and his performance was exceptional tonight like i say like you were saying about house party there's about 20 people in the small lounge and we were all going nuts when michael performed eurovision fans or not and Everybody was like, that's surely got to win. I'm getting texts through from people who know I love Eurovision, like, that's the one. It was the right choice. I think there was no question about it when the performances happened. Um, and again, what you're saying, Angus, about Rylan, like, I just, what I love about Rylan, he, he will say the good and the bad. And yeah, the choreography was maybe a bit forced, but I think they've got so much time to work on it. Thank, like, good thing that the UK kind of do early. Um, but yeah, it's it's good. I think the performance night was just so, so good, so strong. And yeah, I think it's something to be very proud of. I'm gonna make a bold statement. Um, I genuinely think come May, this might be one of the U best UK entries. I'm gonna say at least since JD Ewan, because I think Lucy, Lucy Jones was great, but I think Michael has maybe a bit more potential, potentially. Um, and I just think, and I just, I think that, um, yeah, I think it's got a lot of potential, and there's so much to come from him. I think we're very, I'm just relieved to be honest with you that he won. I'm so happy he won. So I think he's a very nice guy. I think he's the most sincere of all the contestants we've encountered. Like when he yeah. tells his personal story about working at McDonald's and then winning yeah. a BBC show and then potentially going to Eurovision and now going to Eurovision, I think it's just really, okay, there's some party people. Can we close the door? It's a little- Yeah, bad. Sasha, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, girl, you at a party, you real sweet to even be doing this. But I just feel like, I'm glad he won is my point. I think he's a sweet person with a great backstory and he's very likable. I think this continues a pattern for the UK of having very good performers with songs that are not as good as they are. Mm. The song is just, it is predictable. It is expected. Yes, it has nice moments for sure, a hundred percent. And I can understand why people got tingles. I was trying to get the tingles, but it just didn't happen. But he was the superior vocalist this evening on those final three. 
he was the one who had the wow moment. I almost feel like they threw more at his staging than other people's staging. It just felt more complete. Um, mm. I didn't like his mm. choreo, but I thought the colors worked, the lighting worked. Um, first of all, I think that um, Holly Tandy should have won that song off. I think Holly Tandy had the better. If you uh, the cowboy dance, uh, yeah. locally she was on point. Holly Tandy was on point, and then when they, but it was clear they were going to pick um, Michael because all the judges stood up. And at that point, it was kind of obvious that they want him to win. And he did win. And, you know, it's very respectful placing. I think he's deserving. It's fine. I'm not angry or upset about this. I just think they need to do a revamp and try to make this feel more original on the ESC stage. So next question, guys. How will this do at Eurovision? Angus. So, I mean, I think actually, obviously it's hard to say, but we you have the six songs confirmed for the competition they showed tonight. Um, Oh, Sorry, we're getting a lot of comments. People are saying, what is the background noise? What is the background noise? Is it possible to be- oh, I'm so sorry, it's me. Is it possible to be covered? I'll move further away. Oh, thank you, sorry. <laughs> I'm moving further away. Um, yeah, there if, we go. I'm if, away. We, if we talk about its potential for origin, so the song is much more a jury song. I think if we look at ballad performance, you know, you look at Lucy Jones as the nearest case study we have, televote wise, this is not gonna set people alive because there are a lot of countries that will have ballad type songs in the final. Victoria just got through the semi final in Sweden. There's a lot of stuff in the mix for that. That's not traditional. However, jury wise, um, his vocal really lends itself to winning points there. Um, if he can hit them, which he did tonight, and obviously falsetto, there's also problems. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I. It's difficult. Certainly, this feels like it should be more of a top 20 entry than a top 26. Like, I think the past, like, Suri, God bless her, God love her, Storm never felt like it was going to get into the top 20, the same way as Body Sayo. So I think definitely into the top 20 for this. I think the real thing is staging because choreography, we should talk about it. It was more kind of um, commitment to stuff. He felt quite limp. So there were a lot of like microphone, big like bam moments, which is sort of elementary stagecraft as you go bam, you throw the arms out and you hold it. And he sort of, swirl so that was kind of like bigger than swirl and like you need to commit to that and sell that so and he's a young performer and often we see with younger performers there's issues with that choreo stage gap piece so performance is key jury wise this should really appeal um staging matters a lot like if the bbc brings something smart and clever like germany did last year perhaps we can see this being better than mike um but you know, in its current format, it is obviously a Eurovision ballad. Nothing wrong with that, but equally nothing extraordinary. There's a world of revamp possible. He's very charismatic and can sing well. So I think um, you have sort of some points that right now, I suspect better than Suri, whether that means left-hand side of the scoreboard or not, remains to be seen, I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I really want to make the point whilst you're talking about Suri that she was exceptional during the national final tonight. Like, I'm going to throw it out there. Whilst this is nothing on her because I think she's excellent, but when Storm, I was in the crowd at you decided last year, and as soon as she won, I was like, oh, right. Because I really wanted a Sander to win. I didn't, I kind of knew what was going to happen with Storm, but she is. Excellent, and she just deserves a shout out tonight because if she had performed Storm like that, I'm not gonna say it would have been different, but it might have been different. It was so good in the national final tonight. Um, anyway, moving on to Michael Rice. Um, I think we're gonna get a better result than Storm. I'm not gonna say we're gonna be top 10. I'm British, I'm not gonna say that. Um, I think maybe he can match Lucy Jones's result. Um, that, to be fair, and I know a lot of people say that the British fans can be unrealistic, to us, 15th was a victory with Lucy Jones. Mm. And I feel like maybe we can get that again. And maybe 15th is fantastic. I would like to see a left side, but I'm not sure that's going to happen this year. Um, but it's certainly something, it's a nice year for us. <laughs> Whereas very often, like, don't even get me started in 2015. Um, it's just, it can be quite a dampener to the season going into it, like, but ours is so bad. But this year, I think we have got a genuine effort. I genuinely think that, you know, John Lundvik wrote this song. It's going to be interesting if he wins Melfest, by the way. Um, but it's, 
I think we've got a genuinely good chance to do all right, which I'm really happy with, to be honest. You guys, I really want to share the enthusiasm, but I'm just not here for that. <laughs> I, I gotta get it real. I wasn't enthusiastic. I was just, you know, positive. I honestly think I said 15. <laughs> verses, he sounds great in the chorus, but I thought in the verses it was actually quite off in both the first round and the second round. And I think what won here was that this song, we've talked about, you know, the X Factor winner single, it has that mass appeal that may do well in the UK, but I just don't think this will translate internationally, even if it was written by Swedes. I just see this as middling again. I see this as 15th being, you know, wishful thinking. And I think, I hope he does do well because he's a great guy and they can elevate this. Definitely they can elevate this. But last year, Surrey had that wow performance, as you mentioned, that feeling on the live version in the BBC You Decide, you could feel it through the television. Tonight, I didn't feel that same impact, which is why I'm slightly worried. I thought it, you know, it's a deserving winner, but I didn't have that impact, the tingles, um, which you guys did. And I don't know if that's because I'm a crabby American who's not like 100% British, or if maybe, I don't know, I'm not blinded by patriotism. I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, no, I, think, I entirely get what you're saying. I think where we are is Lucy Jones' first version of Never Go Off On You from 2017. It was the same kind of, uh, there is something, like I'm not, I per se did not get goosebumps. People with me did, who I tend to think are a representative thing. But I think we're at that like, 20, like this is a good starting point. There are elements here that could work well, but right now we're kind of a 19. So maybe we try a revamp, maybe we look at the performance, we can go higher. Him himself is fantastic. The problem, like you say, is the song. It doesn't match what he can do. However, we have seen with Lucy Jones of others, you know, you could, you add a funky mirror, you add some electro effects and suddenly, boom. So there are good ingredients here. I think just maybe more work to do before May. But it's not electro velvet. It's not electro velvet. Nothing is electro velvet, and that is a fact. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I do get where you come from on the not as good, maybe. Um, but I do think come May, something very special could happen. I don't know. Um, I do think the UK can either do... I don't think Surrey had enough of a revamp. To be fair, Storm was Storm, as much as she was great. But I think with this, I think the the key change is a little bit, it still makes me go, eh, a little bit. And I can see what William's saying in, it's another ballad. But unfortunately, when it comes to Eurovision, the kind of act we are going to get auditioning, realistically, are your West End singers, which is no bad thing. Um, but, you know, my pet peeve in this world is seeing on Twitter, like, even if Adele went, Adele's not going to go. So we're going to get, you know, Michael is a fabulous singer. He can sell this ballad so good. I think he was nervous tonight, and maybe that doesn't bode well for Tel Aviv. Um, but I think kind of, he's got three months to get it together, and he, he can put it together. I really am a lot more optimistic than I have been in, other than Lucy Jones, this is the most optimistic I've been in 10 years. Like, not like subduing it at all. I am very optimistic that we can get 15th. Like, I'm not gonna say we're gonna win, because we ain't. Like, that's not happening. But 15th is possible, I think. So, I, in terms of general thoughts, in the super final, y'all are gonna hate me. I'm gonna get so much shade in the comments. I actually thought that Jordan Clark's cor chorus was the catchiest. It's the one I'm still humming. It just gets stuck in your head. I'm not saying it's an amazing song. I think the verses are very weak, but that chorus is strangely addictive. And I think even the experts mentioned that. Like, and my husband, he was also humming it. Like, this is the one that people hum and kind of, I don't know, at least me, it really got stuck in my head. Um, Carrie Ann, while I preferred her overall, because she had dancing and the capability to move, I thought vocally it was a bit off. It's just hard to sing that kind of song while you're shaking everything you got. But overall, for me, it was more enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, I think the Carrie Ann one is interesting because we actually, we watched the first one and we were like, oh, the sound mix sounds a bit off. And my like, friends were like, we would have liked that, but it sounded better. We changed the sound setting on our television and that made a huge difference to how she came across live. But yeah, I mean, I would be lying if I had said Carrie Ann was not the one I wanted to win going into it. Like, I think that was at least something different and fun and danceable. Um, however, 
vocal problems I see. The Jordan Clark thing, I entirely disagree with you. I he's wonderful, great that he was enthusiastic for the contest. I stand by my original verdict, which is that that song is dreadful, particularly the chorus. I really found unbearable. Um, so I am totally pleased that he did not win. Um, he's great, love the enthusiasm. That version yeah. and maids of that song, not good for me. And I that was my big concern was that that song was going to come through and win because I understand the thing about the chorus being catchy, but you know what else is catchy? Viruses and they kill people. So I just really don't um, endorse the Freaks and Jaws. Carrie Ann, I was really hopeful. And the second run I thought she sounded better on, um, but I entirely get why Michael won the kind of super final format. Um, I just think it is fortuitous that we did not pick Freaks because that really would be sort of 24th and under territory for me. Can I picture that Freaks would have been 26? <laughs> I think with Jordan, I'm going to say one positive thing. The second time round, he was 20 times better. The first night, he was so off. And can I just say, that staging, the BBC were like, you know what was successful last year? The Greatest Showman and the Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's throw in one. And it was so bad. Uh, not as bad as Joy Racing Cowboys from Holly Tandy. The whole room exploded with laughter when that happened. Um, but I was getting some broke back mountain going on. I was crying laughing. I'm not even, I mean, I'm an easy laugh crier, but I really was hounding at that. Like, what is happening? Is this magic mic? Um, but with, um, with Jordan, he was so much better in the second round, but he did have a sense of arrogance, maybe. Um, I think he thought he was going to win it. Maybe I'm, I'm just completely assuming here, obviously. But there was a sense of, there was something I just didn't like about it. Um, with three, I, I genuinely, you know what, I thought Freaks was bad the first time. I thought it was worse tonight. Uh, yeah, it was, maids were, made, sorry, were really, really bad. Well, they, you know what, they, I think one of them is a much stronger singer than the other two. It's not their fault. They're good singers. It's the song. I think yeah. they are exceptional. But... And the combination of them just doesn't work. Sometimes companies just don't work together, and so they get put in different shows. So let's just say that one needs to break up. I think also they got no help with staging. It seemed like three women turned up in track suits. It's like, are, are they supposed to go to like soccer practice? Sorry, that was Jordan Clark football practice. Or are they supposed to go to the gym? I was just a little bit confused by that. Vocally, it was off. Bigger than us, it's so funny. Um, the person I was watching with a few people, and when Bigger Than Us came on, they were like, "Oh, Bigger Than Us." They're talking about Holly Tander's Cowboys business, and I was like, "No, no, 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 no! That is not what they're talking about." In any case, the final question for you guys, because we're trying to keep these videos under twenty minutes, is where do you rank Michael Rice's Bigger Than Us among the five Eurovision songs we now have? Lake Malawi is in, uh, a friend of a friend in Czech Republic. Um, La Vinda in Spain from Mickey. Jonita Maliki in Albania with that song I can't pronounce. Um, and the other two, Francis Balal Hosani with Roy and of course, Michael Rice. And so I think for me, if you've got songs like Spain is far and away out ahead for me. I heard that song, it clicked. I also instantly was just like, this sounds like a song that will do well in the competition. Um, and I really like that with Mickey in Spain. Again, Bilal, I actually think is contemporary. It has something else to it. I think he has a lot of charisma. Uh, so what I'm talking, of the five songs that we have, I guess if we add this one into the mix, he is probably in the lower half for me. Um, and that's just because I think Spain, France, Czech Republic, I prefer those songs. Albania, not as much. Albania is probably lower than this for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've, we've discussed this on call. I think the song in its current form is a cookie cutter Eurovision ballad. And it has moments where he'll sound great. I think it can really appeal to juries, but this is not as ambitious as I think the United Kingdom should be, particularly with Michael's talent behind it. Um, so yeah, I it's not one of my sort of tops from the few songs that we have. Um, however, give us a revamp, give us something more for the performance, um, look to match up to the talent Michael can bring to it. I mean, because if this was about ranking the personalities, he's my number one, because I think he's really sweet, he's enduring, he has a fantastic voice, 
probably the best voice the people we have selected so far. I mean, like you rank him against Belial, against Mickey. I think he probably comes out better than either of those male vocalists. But the song is key and the song needs more for me. So yeah, he's around. If there's six songs now, he's like my four or my five out of six, which maybe when all the songs are out, he's up near the top. However, I just, I want more. I want more ambition is what I want for the talent on offer. I mean, you guys are going to hate me now. <laughs> it is my second now. Uh, Mickey, I can't get it out of my head. So that's still first. You know what? I hated Lavender the first time I heard it. It took me three hours and I was on board. I was like, yes. Um, already looking forward to Amsterdam to actually bust out some moves to Lavender. Um, so Lavender is still my number one. And I'm not usually a Spain stan, but this year I really am so far. I absolutely love Lavender. I, oh God, I'm going to sound like such a misery. I don't like a lot of the songs I've been selected so far. I'm not a fan of, I can't say this word, and you can laugh at me, but Hua, uh, Bilal's song. I can't, I just, I can't get on board with the song. I love Bilal, but I don't like the song, particularly Albania. I'm usually a massive Albania fan, but this year it is my last. I really am not on board with that at all. Um, the Czech Republic, it's all right, but I just don't like the spoken part. But yeah, just long story short, UK is my second. I I do really like it, actually. It's taken a little bit of time. I didn't like it on first listen, which is a bit worrying because casual viewers are only going to hear it once. So maybe that's not a good omen for me. I really did not like Bigger Than Us the first time I heard it. Um, but now it is my second. I just can't stop dancing to Lavender. It's a banger. Bring it on. <laughs> So I think for me, when I'm trying to assess the top five, it's not just about the song, it's about like the other qualities as well, like potential staging, backstory, like the whole package, like what makes it special. And at this point, I just feel like all the other songs have something more special. You know, in France, yes, Bilal, he's been improving his vocals, the song needs some work, but at least he's a, you know, he's a big personality. He's a mm. social media star. Lavinda is oh, yeah. my number one. It's a great song. It's got, it's just instantly my number one. Um, so I said, yeah, who else? Albania, they've got this narrative, this immigration narrative. She's very striking when you look at her, her styling, the Cleopatra edge. You know, like Malawi, he's very attractive, a cute, cute guy singing with a British accent from the Czech Republic, kind of retro 80s. I, you know, there's something else about the other songs I can latch on to. But with this one, I'm just struggling at the moment to find something. It's good. It's not bad. I'm not throwing shade. I'm not hating. It's just, I don't know why I would vote for that. You know, because you only vote for one or two songs. And yeah. I, if I think, but why would I vote for this? I, I would respect it, but that's different from being motivated enough to pick up the phone and spend some coins. It costs money, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All you need is something bigger than this. That's what you need. That's and a revamp can do that. They can exactly. revamp this. this is, yeah. I mean, they, they, they've shown they can do and they can destroy a revamp. So it could go either way, really. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I think with Laurel Barker, um, who of course wrote Zib Stones, among other things, and John Lundvik, they are professionals. They're open to fixing, mm. changing, you know, because they want to do well, right? Um, so I think that something will happen. I, I don't expect this to be the exact same product that goes to Tel Aviv. No, completely, completely. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think that's something like there's a talented team behind it, talented singer. So the thing now to work on that they've got the ticket is the song. Um, and I think there's willing there for the BBC because even Storm last year went for a revamp. Like the version they did at You Decide was not the version on stage in Tel Aviv. So I think they're open to it. I think there will be work on this and it can do better because the ingredients are there and this is probably a much better starting point than last year um, and maybe a couple other of previous years that we've seen from the UK. Um, yeah, and the backstory is key. He has a good backstory, sounds great, lots of talent, good look, good vibe. Um, he just, yeah, the song needs bigger. That's what, bigger everything. No, I agree. I kind of think a bit more, I was going to say instrumentation. I think maybe they need to strip back the cheese and just make it more, again, sorry to reference, sorry again, but that performance tonight was really beautiful. And I think maybe they need to kind of strip it back a little bit almost in a way, take away the Westlife key change, bring on something a bit more classic because the UK does two things very well. 
indie rock and West End kind of drama. And I think they need to go, I think this is too West End. I don't think it is West End drama. I think Lucy Jones was. Um, I think it needs to choose one of those things that's obviously not going to be indie rock. So I think they just need to either strip it right back to like Surrey or just bring on like, yeah, the West End kind of beautifulness of it. Well, you guys have talked up a storm, no pun intended. Thank you so much. That's what we think. What do you think? Was Michael your winner? Do you think the UK can go above the top 15 or do you think it's another bottom five? Let us know here on WeWe Vlogs. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, use the comment box below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and know what you think about our opinions and our fabulous outfits. I'm in pajamas. <laughs> I'm in a sports shirt, I'm not looking to look. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.